Hi friends! Welcome back to Road Just Traveled, your trusted travel guide. Today we are talking about Airbnb, specifically 13 things I absolutely hate about it. If you don't know, I have been harping about Airbnb, um, mostly positive, since I started my channel in 2019. I've said it's a great way to find a good priced place to stay. You can get one with a kitchen or a kitchenette and save some money cooking some of your meals instead of going out to restaurants all the time. You can get one with a laundry machine so you'll only need to pack a carry-on and you can do laundry. All that stuff. You know, for years I have almost exclusively used Airbnb. Uh, I look back at my last 15 trips and I've only stayed in hotels twice, I believe. Everything else has been Airbnb. However, in a few weeks, I am traveling to San Francisco and I booked a freaking hotel. Unheard of for me. <laughs> and in my last vacation, I moved from a somewhat affordable Airbnb for the space to a very expensive hotel, which is a really big deal for a budget traveler like me. And it caused me to really rethink my whole system and why I am using Airbnb when it has changed a lot over the years and it is quite flawed. Not to mention in the research that I was doing for this video, I found out some absolutely horrifying things that I think you'll wanna know about. So I did a video a while back where I went over the history of Airbnb and how it's contributed to over tourism and kind of some more ugly stuff about it. I will link that in the description. And um, this is my personal view on everything that sucks about it. So if you want like, if you're new here, I'm Jesse. As a traveler, I've spent years figuring out how to travel cheaply while still having a blast. Now I share this knowledge with you, so subscribe, yada yada, I've already talked a lot. Let's get right into this video. So here are some things I hate about Airbnb, most of which have really gotten worse over the last few years. Why is a room listed in search at a certain price but then you go to book it and they tack on all these fees, which can be like an extra 50% of the whole cost of the place. Like hundreds of dollars can be added and it, I, I don't understand. Speaking of fees, if you've used Airbnb, you may have had a situation where when you're leaving, there's a little checkout instructions that ask you to clean before you leave. Like obviously I don't wanna trash a place. I, I have reviews in my Airbnb that people have said like, oh, Jesse leaves the place tidy. Yeah, I will run the dishwasher, I'll strip the beds, like I'll do little things, I won't leave it a mess. But I've been to an Airbnb where they made us take all of the trash out of the house and drive it down to a trash collection center and had the fucking gall to charge us a massive cleaning fee on top of that. And they also warned us that if we didn't take all of our trash out, they would charge us another fee. Why am I paying a cleaning fee if I have to run the trash out and like do some of the cleaning myself? Like. So if you check into your Airbnb, somehow like rub your host the wrong way, Figuratively, don't massage your host. That'll definitely not get you anywhere you wanna be. Um, and they have every right to contact Airbnb and they can say, I don't wanna host this person anymore. And of course there are like anti-discrimination laws and such, but they can just say, this person made me uncomfortable. No questions asked, you are being kicked out. In fact, there have been allegations as well as lawsuits regarding racial discrimination, as in someone seeing a person of color or a name sounding like it belonged to a person of color and then being denied lodging. Horrible, but it's happened. Also with cancellations, I've had a reservation canceled three weeks before a trip during a holiday, it was over Christmas, and Airbnb says they'll help you. And sure, they will send you a few links, but that's pretty much it. When I had my stay canceled three weeks ahead, the prices of places were like triple what they were when I booked because it was so last minute. So I, it cost me hundreds of dollars extra, but, uh, but don't worry, Airbnb and their fantastic customer service made up for it by giving me a $30 credit. $30 cost me an extra like $400, but it's okay because they gave me $30. Thanks Airbnb. Speaking of, their customer service sucks. I remember when it was really good. 
It was like 2015, my husband rented a home for Comic-Con in San Diego, and the host canceled it literally a week or two before, presumably so they could rebook with someone else for more, which I talk about in this video. It's a huge Airbnb scam you need to be careful about. Um, but Airbnb not only found a really good replacement for him, but they covered the difference, so it didn't cost my husband a penny to get the new place. Now, those days of good customer service are long gone. Now they'll just give you a $30 credit. <laughs> $30, don't spend it all in one place. So I, I got really into Airbnb because at the time, you could get Airbnbs for so much cheaper than hotels. You know, you'd be staying in someone's spare bedroom or their guest house or whatever, and it would be like less than $100 a night for a whole apartment, and it was great. And now it's like the same price as hotel rooms. Like I found a good deal for a trendy, nice hotel in a good area in San Francisco for the same price as like a dingy, tiny apartment. Now speaking of, Airbnb has gone from being like a rent out a local spare bedroom in a cool part of town to save money and get like tips on restaurants to try or whatever, to just big companies buying out entire buildings to list apartments on Airbnbs like their hotels. It's a lot less personal or personable or whatever, and it's a lot colder. It's just not the same. And on top of that, the rise in Airbnb has caused home prices to skyrocket, both for renters and for homeowners, pushing the locals out of neighborhoods that their families have lived in for generations. And the rich get richer. Okay, listen, I'm not a big diva when it comes to hotels, uh, though I realize I'm not as flexible as I was in my early 20s. Um, I don't care if accommodation has ugly decor, Ikea furniture, doesn't look luxury, sandpaper towels. I do not care. I kind of like want the bed to be comfortable enough for me to sleep decent, and I don't want bed bugs, and that's kind of, that's kind of my standard. <laughs> but I have noticed that Airbnbs have gotten a lot more dingy and no frills. Like while the prices have gone up in my experience, in our last trip, we were in a closet. I wish I took pictures of it, but it was literally 10 feet by 10 feet. It had a tiny window with a view of a brick wall and an AC unit. Uh, it felt like I was in prison. I was, it was so much worse because then we got COVID and we couldn't leave. And at first I was like, this is just gonna be a crash pad. I don't care what it looks like. Ugh, we were stuck there. And because we had to extend our trip to comply with the CDC guidelines, to wait 10 days to travel, we ended up splurging on a hotel. And thankfully I had travel insurance, always get travel insurance, especially now, and that covered it. But holy shit, walking out of that dungeon into a hotel really lifted my spirits. And in my opinion, the quality of Airbnb has really diminished and it has gone from like renting someone's cute little home to a landlord, like shoving you in a tiny room and trying to keep margins as high as possible. Bait and switches. So in my last Airbnb, it looked absolutely nothing like the photos. Again, I really wish I took a picture, but by that it meant it was a completely different room. It looked nothing like it. And the photo uh, it had a bright window with a desk and it was a decent sized room, at least for New York. And I ended up with a cave with a view of a brick wall, no desk, no light. Uh, it was totally awful. And thankfully I complained to them and they switched us. But why can't you just give me the room that I booked? Like, why doesn't every listing just have the room? Why do you have to like give me? I, I, I. Sadly, that was a mild example of a bait and switch. On the website Airbnb Hell, which is a blog where people submit Airbnb stories, there are many accounts of bait and switches that go from like a decent or nice looking room and they end up in like disgusting or even unsafe situations. So I was in London at this flat, as they would say, um, an apartment. And when I was entering the building, there was this big sign that said, Airbnbs are banned. If we find out your Airbnb in your place, you will be evicted, including your guest immediately. Call this number if you like think your neighbor is Airbnb being the place. So in the back of my mind, my whole trip, I was like, I hope they don't find out about this. 
while I'm staying here because that would really suck to get kicked out on vacation. Like I just bought a condo in Los Angeles and HOA has all of these regulations about renting and short-term rentals are banned and all these things. Like, and, and I don't blame them either. Like neighbors often hate when the house next door is an Airbnb because there's a lot of foot traffic and parties and it may attract some shadies and lots of stuff like that. So it's just, it's tough. There's some weird hosts on Airbnb. So generally, not, not all the time, but generally when you stay in a hotel, you might have the occasional weirdo, but most of the people working there are polite and reserved and friendly and they want you to have a nice stay so that they can keep their job. Uh, I can't think of a single hotel where I was like creeped out or uncomfortable from an employee there. I honestly can't. I can name a few Airbnb hosts that made me uncomfortable. My husband and I stayed in a woman's guest room near Yosemite as an Airbnb and she was part of an MLM and was trying to sell us this like purple superfood powder that was gonna cure all our ailments and change our lives. I couldn't get out of there fast enough, let me tell you. And in Paris, our host barged in at 9 a.m. just saying, I need to change your mattress. And then we stood like in our pajamas, horrified, while she just like ripped our mattress off and threw on a new one and then just bounced. Um, she also had a friend that was buzzing our doorbell at, not exaggerating, three or four in the morning and like I opened, wouldn't stop buzzing her doorbell until I opened and then she was like, oh, désolé madame, which means I'm sorry. Um, and I was just like, what? what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> By the way, this host is no longer on the app, so I'm wondering if she got kicked off because she was so awful, but I don't know. I've also had wonderful hosts, so it's not all of them, but it's enough to make it a problem. Also, I just learned that according to Airbnb's website, the hosts are not thoroughly background checked. In fact, and I quote from Airbnb's website, these database checks may not reveal comprehensive or recent criminal record activity. Not to mention, the only countries in which they attempt to run background checks are in the United States and India. Airbnb has listings in over 200 countries, and they only offer a limited background check, keyword limited, in two of them. I have stayed in Airbnbs in Europe and Central America and all over the US and after learning that there is limited to zero background checking, it's a little disconcerting. So in most states, hotels have certain regulations of requiring things for safety like carbon monoxide and smoke detectors, you know, stuff that will detect things before they kill you. Um, Airbnbs are different. Generally, the company only requires them if local laws specifically require these safety features for short-term rentals. Now, in 2021, a family was found dead in their Airbnb in Mexico because there was a gas leak and there was no warning to them because there was no alarms or whatever, detectors. They went to bed, didn't wake up. It's absolutely horrifying, you know, but why, why wouldn't Airbnb, after that happened, tighten up their policies? And I guess if we're gonna defend Airbnb, I should say that they do provide free carbon monoxide detectors to their hosts, but there is no verifying that they install them or keep them there. And who knows, are they in every room? Do they just give you one for an entire house? Like, I don't know, I've been to places where the listing says there are smoke and monoxide detectors and there are not. So, I don't know. I know the odds of a carbon monoxide leak or a fire or whatever are rare, but why risk it when you know hotels are safer in that regard? So also in my opinion, it's further proof that Airbnb and their hosts do not always give a shit about your safety. And those are, in my opinion, the worst things about Airbnb. Now this was a really interesting video to put together, uh, but I'm definitely a bit apprehensive towards Airbnb right now. Also, do you use Airbnb? Why or why not? What's your experience with it been like? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. If this was helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'm also on Instagram, check me out there. I post new videos every other Sunday and shorts in between. So subscribe and I will see you next week. Happy travels.